So for the many Resident Evil fans out there, we all remember Albert Wesker, the egotistical megalomaniac who was hellbent on becoming the god of the RE universe. As we watch him be part of the RPD Stars team, to becoming the superhuman figure and be that perfect stereotypical villain that we had to eliminate, giving us a fun overall time going up against this monster. Anyways, what is up you guys, this is Heydeva, and in this video we'll break down how Albert Wesker was the perfect villain for his particular role, as we quickly cover how he became who he is and the terrible repercussion of his enhanced superhuman powers could have cost the Resident Evil world, where we cover some of his most important moments, his overall psyche, and the rationale for his actions, and his largest role in Resident Evil 5. Anyways, before we get started with the video, please feel free to like and subscribe for more Resident Evil content in the future. Alright, so starting off, let's cover the early days of Albert Wesker, where he's known to be part of the eugenics experiment which was called Project Wesker, which was headed by none other than Oswell E. Spencer, one of the founding members of the Umbrella Corporation. With the rationale to this project was to create a superior breed of human beings. So this would have children who was taken from their families and brought up in an environment that would nurture to their desired field of expertise and would constantly be monitored by Umbrella. Also, with some digging around the Resident Evil lore, these children were injected with an experimental progenitor viral strain in their younger years, causing most of the child candidates to die. But the surviving members which included both Albert and Alex Wesker were able to adapt to this strain and pursue their eugenics goal that Spencer has always wanted, becoming highly successful in their preferred line of field, in which in this case had Albert Wesker become this brilliant virologist and ending up working for the Umbrella Corporation, becoming acquainted with another virologist by the name of William Bergen, the man who created the G-Virus, as they went on for many years doing countless inhumane viral research projects that even led to the coup of one of Umbrella's main founders, Dr. James Marcus. take over your research. <laughs> Wesker Birkin. So in the later part of the 1990s, Albert Wesker was still working for Umbrella, but had the facade of becoming the leader of the Stars Alpha team of Raccoon City's police department, with this becoming one of the main plot points that has caused the decimation of the Stars team from Resident Evil 1, where we had Chris, Jill, and the many other members investigate the Spencer Mansion in the Arclay Mountains, being monitored by Wesker to acquire more research and combat data from his unsuspecting colleagues. Also during this time, Albert has been given another experimental progenitor viral strain by William Birkin, so when an unsuspected twist of fate happened when the tyrant supposedly killed Albert, he was back alive and well shortly after, which is a feat in itself considering the tyrant impaled him straight in the middle of his back and abdomen, which would have not only destroyed his spinal column, but eviscerated the many organs of his body. I will never forget the cold, dark fingers of death reaching out for me. However, even that death was a necessary component of the big picture. The virus that Birkin had created brought me back from the brink of annihilation. When I awoke, hatred became my master. But luckily for him, the viral strain that he was given has granted him his new life, becoming this instantaneous superhuman being, capable of doing the things that we can only imagine. With some of the early examples of this was a superhuman speed when running through the Arclay Mounds in Umbrella Chronicles, with his next appearance was in Code Veronica. But this time, more of his superhuman feats were shown many times during our journey in this game, with the biggest example was when both him and Chris fought, were again displaying his superhuman speed and strength. Magnificent. 
don't you think? But the biggest blow would happen when Chris outsmarts him for a quick moment, causing the large beams of steel falling directly on top of Wesker, which I looked up and saw some of these beams may weigh around 17,000 pounds or more each. But even then, it still wasn't enough to keep Wesker down. As we watch him rise from the trauma, what the most noticeable effect to him was just him staggering for a bit. So with this in mind, we get a small taste of what Wesker can do, which would later be fully fleshed out in Resident Evil 5. Today's your lucky day. Next time we meet, don't count on another. Next time. Until we meet again. <laughs> <laughs> As we watch him not only be like Neo from the Matrix, but his overall psyche and ego may have gotten the best of him, which I'll discuss more in depth in a bit later in the video. Anyways, as we move on to RE5, we get a chance to find out that Wesker again is doing his regular shenanigans, causing another catastrophe by spreading the Uroboros virus, which can cause people who doesn't adapt well to become like this. Only the chosen ones are fit for the coming new world. 